Hi, my name is Jackie Lee Price and welcome to Shadowboxing. So hi and welcome to Archie's shop. Nice to see you, long time. How are you doing? Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, I'm well, thanks. How are you? I'm not bad. I cannot complain. So how is life treating you in lockdown? Mm. Um, frustrating now, a little bit. Yeah. Do a few sunbeds and an haircut. <laughs> all the all the op- important things in life, Archie. Yeah, all the, all the important things. <laughs> to be fair, um, I, I, you're the type of person, aren't you, that I, I guess that someone has to throw out the gym. So how are you coping not training? Uh, it's been, like I said, it's been frustrating, but I think now this is where you've got to use, um, I've got to use my mental programs uh, and stay mentally focused, which to be honest with you, I have. I've just kind of took it as a positive and, and just enjoying time with the family, downtime, getting things done that need to get done um, and just using the time wisely, really. Yes, yeah, so I was going to ask you about that. So you've been doing, obviously, a lot of work with Linda Keane. And what sort of things are you doing to keep your your you know you mentally healthy at this time? Well, like I say, it's just because it's, it's the same sort of thing as um as when I'm not when I'm training in every in everyday life. Really, it's just bringing out the positives of everything. And at the end of the day, I know we're stuck here, but it's, it, the most important thing is, is to find the positives. Um, and obviously realize that we're not in this. We're going to be in here for a while, but it's not going to be forever. So, at the end of the day, we are going to get through this. Um, it ain't just me and it, it's everybody else. So, we've just got to stay positive and, uh, and yeah, like I say, use the time wisely. Don't waste the time because once camp starts, everything's all full on again. So, just enjoy and use the time whilst I can. I like that, um, using the time wisely because I don't think that's necessarily just about training, though, is it? Because there are quite a lot of boxers that suffer with mental health, isn't there? Well, exactly that. Um, for me, using time wisely, like I say, is, is getting things done around the house, spending quality time with the family, um, and even like uh, doing paperwork. There's, uh, I've got, there's loads of paperwork side of things. Just loads of and look at different opportunities. Um, I like I like to be active all the time, so I'm, I'm trying to find different opportunities. When I do come out of this, uh, I can look at sponsors and and different ways of uh, going to to. Um, approach different sponsors so i'm just yeah like i say doing my paper everything really and just trying to do bits of training going out for bike rides and doing bits of bobs so you're keeping nice and busy which is good to hear because i think it could be quite easy to sort of switch off and watch uh netflix etc wouldn't it well exactly that like i say if you if you just um wake up and you toss around all day and not and not do anything you just start falling to like um, a pattern really didn't you and, and it's not and it's going to be hard to get out of I'm trying to keep things routine getting up early going to bed at a reasonable time um, to be honest I haven't even watched much telly I'm, I'm struggling to watch telly because I'm keeping myself as busy as I can um, so yeah no, I don't know what I'm half enjoying it to be honest with you. like I say it's frustrating with the training side of things but what can you do it is what it is I think everyone's health is more important than having to worry about things like that at the minute so Absolutely. And I think a lot of people can take uh, a bit of your advice because um, I've been talking to a few people and we've been talking about, you know, what we've been reflecting on at this time. And so you're using this time positively, not to sort of waste it. And again, looking at the things like approaching people, sponsors, etc. When you when you get out of it, has there been anything else that you sort of learned about yourself in in this time? Um... I haven't gone potty with the kids. Uh, <laughs> I'm still sane at the minute. I haven't gone insane <laughs> just yet, but I'm still sane. But no, like, do you know what? At first, I thought I was going to properly struggle um, with it all. But like I say, I just got to enjoy it. And and when, you, when you're doing things around the house and all these little jobs, the time does pass. Like, it's 20 past seven already. So before you know it, I'm put the kids to bed, watch a bit of telly. That's the first time I watch telly all day and go to bed, do you know what I mean? And go again next tomorrow. So the key is actually keeping a schedule, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Keeping busy. Um, I'm trying, I've been ringing around to see if, like, because like, my nan and granddad, obviously, they're not getting out. Uh, ringing around to see if they need anything done. Um, and just trying to help out as many people. And the neighbours, like, I think my next door neighbour, they're elderly, so they need paper, uh, need a couple of bits. So, just, so if I can, I'll go out and get, and get what I can for them because. 
like I said, I keep health and wealthy, um, and I, I just keep away from coronavirus. That's nice. That's that's nice to sort of look after your neighbours as well, because I think, you know, we were missing that in society, and now all of a sudden, again, people remembering. You know what? It's not just about me. It's about you know our neighbours and friends and family. I do believe there's going to be a lot of positives coming out of this. For such a bad situation that we're all in. I think, um, or a negative situation that we're in, I think there's going to be a lot, a lot of positives come out of this. I totally agree with you, Archie, to be fair. Um, yeah, I, I, I've been saying the same thing. And it is difficult, but like you say, if you get your mind in the right place, then you're, and you're, that, that's almost strengthening your immune system, isn't it, really? So you're the current WBO super featherweight champion. Um, you've defended yeah. your title four times now. Um, let's talk about your last two defences. So Deccan Geraghty, uh, you got him out there uh, with the TKO in the fourth round. But before that, um, people are saying that you were losing every round. Let, let, let's talk about that for a second. <laughs> yeah, do you know what? Um, and to be fair, I was, like I say, towards the end of the third, I started to find my range. It was just about finding my range, really, to be honest with you. Absolutely. I, 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 approached, I approached that... Um, that fight differently. Listen, Declan's a very good fighter. He's won a multi, multi amateur national champion. Do you know what I mean? He's a very good fighter. Yeah. Uh, he come there to win the belt. He had a very good fight with John O'Carroll as well that went 11 rounds or 12 rounds, um, which he was winning that fight as well. But at the end of the day, it's till the last final belt. That's the, that's the bottom line of it. And it's about staying focused till the last belt. And yeah, he, he was, when you say, like you say, when, you, when, he's, when people say to me, oh, he was winning the rounds, he was nicking the rounds. Because they were very close. I wasn't throwing much. He wasn't throwing much. We were both kind of sussing each other out. Um, but my game plan was to get busy towards uh, the, the, the after um, at the back end of the fight. Because I, what I, from what I see of Declan, he was very. Uh, he was a good. He was good for the first two rounds, but then fades. For me, it takes me a couple of rounds to get going, and then once I get going, I just keep the pressure on all the way through to the final belt. Um, but like I say, the shot, that, that shot there is a shot I've been working on for a very long time. Um, a left hook was always going to be the shot for that fight. Yeah. And it, like I say, it, it come off. It did work. Um, we've been working on the shot since, since they announced the fight. And I found the shot earlier than expected. But like I say, I, was, I, I keep throwing it and, it and it was about time it landed. It was distance though, wasn't it? Because I, when I was watching, I was like, that's not really usually Archie. Archie can close down the gap really easily. And yet, I don't know whether it was it the South Pole thing or, or what was it? Um, maybe I think I was just being a bit ignorant to myself because leading up to the fight, all I was sparring was Ricky Burns and Jordan McCory, which are both orthodox fighters and forward fighters. So Declan's, I'm a, I'm a big super featherweight. Um, and I've always believed a great champion can always adapt. Yeah. Which, which I did do, but um, I didn't give myself the, the proper start by not sparring a, uh, a South Pole for a South Pole fight. And that's, I think I kind of, kind of learned that lesson um, just to get going. Because like I said, there were two, there two different opponents. You look at Ricky Burns, you look at Declan and Gary. Declan's a very tall South Pole, rangy yeah. South Pole, awkward as anything, gets on the back foot. Yeah, straight away. As you see, I've come straight on the front foot, but really, I should have drawn him on. Um, but like I say, I went back, adapted. I knew I was down. There was no panic at all. I said to Rich, listen, Rich, he's nicking around. I said, but I will find my feet. Once I find my feet and find that distance and range, then I can start unloading. And to, like I say, towards the end of the third, I got, I got cut in the third. Um, yeah. So I knew it was time to tuck, tuck up shot and start hunting him. And when I did, I found the shot. I mean, that's what I was going to... I was wondering what was going through your mind when you got that um, cut. Was it like, I've got to close this show because you never know what, what's going to happen. Was, was that exactly. what went and through your mind? 100%. And like you say, I, I think I just needed a little kick up the arse, really, because I was, I was sitting on the back foot. Um, well, I was, I was just hunting. What I was doing, I needed to get on the back foot, but I never... He was sitting on the back foot. I was hunting him, which was, is not my game. And he's off, like, nicking, nicking a shot. So that when I knew I got cut, I thought, well, I can't really afford to sit on the back foot now because he's just going to, if I keep getting cut, he's going to get stopped for the cut. So I tuck up shot now and sit on his chest, and that's exactly what we've done, and start letting the hands go. 
and it was quality as well. You were both trying to you were both trying to counter each other or draw each other on for the counter, and it was kind of a bit of like you say, wait in trying to suss each other out. And then what a gorgeous, gorgeous left hook! I mean, just I had to keep running it back, and I was like, that is, that was beautiful. That was really beautiful. Yeah, definitely on the button. Definitely found the shot on the button. Um, yeah, I was over the moon with it. I watched it back a few times myself. It was a lovely shot as I come out of the south for, um, and chopped it over there. So, but when I, do you know what? It's funny because when I, I remember when they rung me about this fight, they said um, about me fighting Declan in. Um, I was in Spain at the time when I had, when I had the, when I had the phone call about fighting Declan, and uh, so I was going to put this on charge. Not used to these interviews on phones. Here we go. Yeah. So <laughs> when they when when they um, when they called me, I was in Spain. And I remember phoning Richard. I said, Rich, listen, the shot here is going to be a left hook. Um, it's going to be a left hook either to the body or to the head, but it's definitely going to be because it's, it's a shot I like throwing. And, um, yeah, it, it worked for that. It was, it was nice. It was nice to get that. I think I needed that as well. I've been stopping a few fighters with body shots and, and, and accumulation of shots. Uh, so, yeah, it was nice to get that one punch perfect left hook. And so then your next bout um, was against uh, Ramlabs. Um, you seemed a lot sharper at that point. I mean, did, like you say, did was the previous bout a thing that went shook you up a little bit? Not as in uh, you weren't frightened or anything like that, but did it kind of shake you up and say you can't be complacent? Do you know what? Um, for me, you see, Ramlabs was a very tough fight for me because the training camp was terrible. It was very, very bad. Uh, I got Ramlaz in at five days' notice. Yet again, another southpaw. The whole time we were sparring unorthodox. But this, uh, we had an opponent, and next minute he's pulled out. So that was a bit of a pain, really. And leading up to Christmas, I, you know, my body was burnt out. I've never the test results I was getting in in uh, strength and conditioning was the lowest I've ever had as a pro. Right. Um, I've done I think two eight rounders for that fight. That was all sparring I've done. It was touch and go of pulling out the fight. Richard, about a week and a half before the fight, he said, look, we're going to have to pull out. Um, but I said, no, 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 before Christmas, it's nice to get a fight at the end of the year. So we took the fight. I don't think it was my best performance. Um, like I said, I made it very hard work. I needed to get on the bat. I was very frustrated. I think you can see that through the fight, me coming back, nodding my head. If it wasn't for my corner and my mental, uh, my programs that I've been doing leading up from Linda, it kept me in, in, in the fight because I, that one there was a few points, you know, where I was just thinking this, this fella's like a ball. He just kept coming and coming and coming. Yeah. Um, and I'm not going to lie, I thought I was going to blow him out in three or four rounds. So when I had that in my head, thinking I'm going to blow him out in three or four rounds, and he's still there, giving me a hard fight, it, sometimes it can be a bit, do you know what I mean? It can be a bit draining. But what do you say, like, you know, you think you're going to go in there and you're going to blow him out. Is this before the fight or was this during the fight? You're thinking, I've, I've, I've felt him out a little bit and I think I can blow him out. No, you know what it was? But it was definitely be uh, before the fight, like I say, leading up to the fight because we weren't going to take no... Richard was... Um, Richard and Linda, Linda herself messaged me and said, Look, I think you better pull out this fight because of your test results. You've hardly been training. Um, I thought, no, 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 I'll be all right. I'll be all right. Mm. And... Uh, I had hard work, so I won't be doing that again. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you have to, there's a saying in the West Indies, if you can't hear, you must feel. <laughs> well, exactly that. So um, I think uh, next time, just being clever, because even though we, we won every round, or well, most rounds, we, we, we won nearly every round, that was fortunate, do you know what I mean? That was fortunate. We can't be doing that at elite level. Well, I mean, to be honest with you, the opponent was a good fighter, a very good fighter. Do you know what I mean? Latvian, eight national champions, box Joe Cordino in the, in the European and in the World Games. He's an active professional. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we've done, we done well. To be running on 70%, if that, and to come out with a win there, then, it, then obviously I've got to take the positives out of the negative, which is that. I mean, I, I was going to say, he, he was no mug, was he, to be fair? And you no. still pulled out a really good performance. I mean, are you going to take from this that, Perhaps you may have taken for granted that uh, your health and the fact that you're usually 100% fit. Are you going to take from this that you just need to listen to your body a bit more and, you know, maybe, I don't know, have a longer time between fights? 
Yeah, hundred. Yeah, you you definitely right because last year was a busy year for me. Uh, obviously, I won the belt in October eighteen. Got injured, so then I boxed um, for a warm up fight, an eight rounder. Then that was it. I boxed Jordan McCory, Declan Gary, and then Ram Labs back to back uh, with like ten weeks in between. And I think my body just worn out. So then come Christmas, I rested. I've come back. Um, I was smashed. To be honest, I was in the best camp I've ever had. Ready for April, I was in the best shape I've ever been in. Uh, I was flying. My movement was was on point. Everything was unbelievable. Back to my lateral movement, boxing on the back foot, using my head, not looking for stoppages, stronger than I've ever been. Uh, and like I say, the fittest I've ever been. And then this has happened. So I was a bit gutted about it. I was looking forward to put, getting in April and, and putting a performance on. But this, this fight has now been um, postponed until later on in the year, has it not? Yeah, the same July, yeah. So at least I suppose you've got um, something to look forward to. And so all of that work is not really going to have gone to waste. No, of course not. But obviously for me, this quarantine come in literally three weeks before fight. So I was just about peaking. I was doing, me 12, I was doing a few 12 round um, spars and I was just about to peak. Now this has happened. So I've had to kind of rein it in a little bit, if you like, because it's still 12 weeks. We'll, we'll be in April, all of April, May, June. It's still got four months. Yeah. It's a very long time. I can, I can be in ready for fight fitness within six weeks, seven, eight weeks. And have they sort of um, given you any more information as to, OK, we definitely think it's going to go ahead in July or, listen, we're not really sure what's going on. Has anyone been as in contact stands, with you? No, as it stands, July is, is what's happening. Um, they're saying July show is 100% on. So as it stands, we are. But it just all depends on the actual world at the minute, doesn't it? At the end of the day, it depends on this virus. If, it's, if it gets any worse, I can't see it being on. Um, but if they can start reining it back a little bit and... and um, then maybe, yeah, the show will be on. I've had a lot of discussion with a couple of boxers now, and I think the biggest worry is being fight fit. Um, do you think that that will be a problem, or do you think as, as long as you've kind of got six weeks out, you're, you're able to sort of step back up to that level again? Yeah, so look, for me, I, peak, I was starting to peak three weeks out, um, and then I've had to just, I, I had a week, and just over a week, completely doing nothing. And now I'm just back in, just doing little bits. So I will, I say back in, I'm indoors doing little bits. So it's a bit harder than usual. Normally I'll be back in the gym. Um, we just got to see how it goes in the, the day, and we have just, it's hard. Um, at the minute, I think it's just more about being thankful uh, in the position I am. I'm, 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 and the kids and everyone's well at the minute, so which is good. So that's, that's, that's my main sort of priority at the minute. Uh, the boxing year is my life, don't get me wrong, but I've also got a family that I've got to uh, keep, keep well. Um, so that's what I'll be doing. And then once boxing, when Frank and, and MTK let me know when it's time to fight, then I'll be ready to fight. Like, like I say, a great champion can adapt. If I can get through at 70%, I'm sure I can do 80% next time. <laughs> well, no, let's not. <laughs> let's not do that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, you're right about your family. Um, you know, they, I think at times like this, you kind of know, you, you kind of see the importance of spending time with them and stuff like that. I mean, how, was, it, was last year, you know, you, you, you were out a lot last year and even though you were advised not to take certain fights because of your health, do you think that there's, I mean, you're an ambitious guy and there's nothing wrong with that, um, but do you feel sometimes that you're on a race to get to this world champion um, uh, title shot or, you know, you just, just feel... Look forward to, um, I look for, I'll tell you what it is. My sparring, I believe in my ability. Um, I, I do believe in my ability. And at the at the minute, you got Jamel Heron and Carl Frampton. They're two fights that I believe I can win. Um, obviously, I've got to be in serious shape for that, but they're definitely two fights that I definitely know I can win. So why not step up for the world title fight? And for me, being only 24, um, I feel like I'm 100% ready. I'm ready to just take out, take it over now. But a lot of people have criticised me and said their bits, but at the end of the day, I need something to get out of bed for. Um, Declan Gary, I knew was a tough, tough, uh, tough test in front of me. Was like, did did I get out of bed properly for it? No. Jordan McCorry, no. Definitely my last fight, no. Maybe you could say Leon Woodstock, but that was back in eighteen. So Leon Woodstock was definitely 
the fight where I thought, right, wow, this is because it was such a 50 50 fight on paper. Yeah. And everyone else, there was critics there saying, with Declan Gary, a lot of people had me favourite, a lot of people had me favourite against um, Jordan McCrory. And obviously, in my last fights, so I've always been a favourite. He put me in as an underdog, like people criticising me with uh, Frampton and Jamel Herring, and you're going to see a completely different me. Uh, and I think that's what happened with William Woodstock. But now, coming from Woodstock, it's now a year and a half later. I've progressed a lot more since then. I'm a lot bigger. I'm a lot stronger. I box would stop now. I wouldn't go past six rounds. So that's what I mean. I look forward to um, to go on and show the critics there that I am ready for world level. And it would be ideal if I get either one of them, Frampton or Jamel, for my next... I'd like I say, I'll get back out of quarantine and get back fighting. And hopefully after that, if they give me the shot, I'll jump at it for sure. I mean, it's coming out of your pores, the belief in yourself, which is brilliant because, like you say, you're always going to have the doubters or the naysayers. I mean, I think sometimes that's just so that, you know, people don't progress. They like to put people down. And it's, it's not very British, is it, to be ambitious? But I think it's brilliant that you're kind of like, listen, I'm here. I need, I need a fight to sort of give it 110%. And um, you're out there looking for those opportunities, which I think is great. Um, I've really enjoyed talking to you. It's been, it's always good to speak to you, Archie. Um, sorry that you didn't get a chance to uh, obviously uh, box this time around, but um, everything happens for a reason. Oh, by the way, is this another title defence or is it, or, or is there something else? Was it a title World, defense? World fight? Off, basically, the opponent they had lined up for me was an Argentinian fighter who uh, won 20, lost three. Um, so I think that would have been for the WBO International, if I'm correct. But I'm not 100% sure, because obviously it's definitely not going to be a defence, obviously, because not in Europe. But um, I'm, I think there's another belt on the line, yeah, because I'm just keeping as active as I can in the WBO. I rank number three at the minute, so I've just got to keep active as possible, hold my ranking and push up to get myself in a position to become um, mandatory. To be fair, I think you're doing it. <laughs> you're really making waves, Archie. So, uh, you know... Just keep, just keep yourself focused. That's all you can do at this time, like everybody else. And um, just any parting words for your fans? Uh, you got any any sort of positive things to say to your fans uh, during this time? Yeah, so just keep them well. Do you know what I mean? I, like, like I say, I've been saying about the family. Use the time very well. I've had a lot of um, messages on Instagram with uh, regarding mental health. So me and Linda will be will be doing something in the, within the next week. Um, so yeah, stay active. Look at keep an eye on my social media, and you'll definitely see see a few things coming out. So if it can help anyone, then obviously it's a win-win. That sounds great, and I can't wait to see that. Um, I love Linda's work as well. Um, obviously got to know her through you. So yeah, I mean, just keep your chin up. Uh, always good to see your face, Archie. And uh, yeah, thanks very much for giving us your time. No, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. If you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber of Shadowbox UK, we'd love to see you, so please go ahead and subscribe now.